Hey guys, my name's Alyssa Cohen and I'm a functional diagnostic health coach um, and I help women who struggle with stubborn weight, fatigue, digestive issues, irregular periods, things like that and I help them transform their lives by transforming their health. So last week over on over my business uh, page, on my Facebook page, um, we talked about thyroid health and how you... If you've had, been having thyroid issues or thyroid uh, thyroid symptoms for a while, and why you might not be getting diagnosed with a thyroid issue, and we also talked about how um, hey, thanks for the hearts, um, and we also talked about how you might have been on thyroid medication for a long time and you aren't getting um, or you're not feeling better or the symptoms are starting to come back. And so, if that is something that you struggle with, go out, go ahead and check out that video. But today. We're going to talk about how to run a full thyroid panel. What is going to be on a full thyroid panel to give you a full picture of your thyroid health and and give you some ideas for the root cause of the thyroid symptoms that you're struggling with. So, um, one of the um, one of the ways that you when you go to your doctor and they test your thyroid, the thing that they're going to test is your TSH, which is, I'm going to give you a little overview of a thyroid hormone physiology here, but um, this is the brain, <laughs> my rendition of the brain. TSH comes from the brain. So this is what your doctor is going to test when you go, go and say that you're struggling with uh, thyroid symptoms. They're gonna, only going to test your TSH, but this is really only an indicator of your brain's function, your brain's ability to signal your thyroid. Your the TSH talks to your thyroid. This is your thyroid gland here. Your TSH talks to your thyroid. Your thyroid then produces T4, which um, is our inactive thyroid hormone. But that's most of what the thyroid gland produces. T4 has to um, be transformed into T3 or reverse T3 in other places in the body. And so you can imagine how if we're only testing TSH, it doesn't really give us a clear picture of what, what is going on downstream. And if, if T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone that actually affects our tissues, if we're only measuring TSH, we, don't, we have no idea what's going down here with T3 and the hormone that actually goes to our tissues. So... Um, Let's talk about what you want to have on a full thyroid panel to get a really good, clear picture of what's going on in your thyroid gland. So the first thing, I mean, you want to test your TSH. So the TSH is, you know, how our brain talks to our thyroid gland. And so you want to test that and see if that's high or low. But additionally, we want to test free T4 and free T3. So free means that it's unbound in the blood, so it's the amount... It's the amount of hormone or it's the, the hormone that our body actually has access to. Um, and so when we measure T4, we get an idea of how much hormone the thyroid gland is actually producing. And we, when we measure T3, we measure how much um, active or effective hormone our body is able to convert from T4. And that conversion happens in places like the the gut and the liver and things like that. And so we want to measure free T4 and free T3. Um, we also want to measure reverse T3. So reverse T3 acts like the brakes on our thyroid function, essentially. So when we're having a lot of, we're really stressed out, um, things like that. Insulin resistance can cause high reverse T3, uh, leptin resistance, stress, like I said. And so when we're producing a lot of reverse T3, it acts like the brakes and it kind of, it's an inactive hormone essentially. And it goes to the receptor sites instead of the T3. And so our T3 can't get to our tissues and make it, you know, increase our metabolism and do all its good things is if we're producing too much reverse T3. So we want to measure that to make sure that we're not producing too much reverse T3. Uh, the next thing we want to test is thyroxine binding globulin. So this is a protein that exists in our blood and it helps take our T4 or T3, all of our thyroid hormones, and get them to the cells. It 
binds them and carries them to our cells. But when it binds them, it essentially makes the hormones inactive. So um, we want to measure the amount of thyroxine binding globulin to make sure that all of our free hormones aren't bound up by that binding globulin. And we can have increase or decrease levels of that binding globulin based upon other hormone imbalances. So it's a good thing to look at and give us some other clues too. Um, then we also want to test for antibodies. So there's, there's multiple different types of antibodies, but in particular we want to test um, antithyroglobulin antibodies and anti-TPO antibodies. So um, these are essentially markers that let us know that our there's an autoimmune component taking place and that our body might be marking our tissue to attack it and break it down essentially. It might it shows that our body's perceiving our own tissue as an invader. And so we want to make sure that we're testing antibodies because actually 80 to 90 percent of thyroid hypothyroid cases are due to an autoimmune condition and not just, you know, your thyroid isn't just malfunctioning, it's an actually autoimmune condition. And so if we're not testing for antibodies, then we wouldn't know that there is um, an autoimmune component to it. So we definitely want to test for antibodies. Um, there's other tests that you can do to test your thyroid, but I think these, to me, these are the most important ones. So again, we'll recap it here. We want to test TSH, free T3, free T4, thyroxin binding globulin, and antibodies. Oh, and reverse T3, that's another thing. And so in, in terms of antibodies, um, anti-TPO antibodies and anti-thyroglobulin antibodies. So my question to you is, um, if, you struggled, if you struggle with thyroid symptoms, have you gotten all these things tested? And also, um, were you able to go to your doctor and ask for these tests? Sometimes a lot of doctors are receptive to, you know, like, hey, I'd like to have some additional testing done. And they're open and, and willing to work with you. So if you've had thyroid symptoms, have you had all these tests done? And have you, were you able to get them done at your doctor's office? And also, I'll put a link below. Um, I have a free guide on my website to a at-home body temperature testing guide. So basically, you can use body temperature to um, see how your thyroid is functioning and also see how your adrenals are functioning. And you can learn tons of stuff by just testing your body temperature. So I'll put a link to that below. Head on over to the website if that sounds interesting to you. And... Yeah, comment below on if you have struggled with thyroid symptoms in the past and share this video if there's somebody out there in your life who's struggling with thyroid symptoms. Thanks for the thumbs up and um, <laughs> all the thumbs up, love it. And share this with them because it might be useful for them because they might need to get this testing also. All right, we'll be back next week with more thyroid stuff. All right, bye.